Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Fuzzfinger here, your host for today, and welcome to Hub, a top-down adventure game brought to you by Runic Games, the developers of Torchlight 1 and 2. So Hub is available to purchase as of today, it's just released 26th of September 2017, at least in the UK, I'm assuming in many other parts of the world as well, and you can get this game on PS4 and on Steam, so for PC. Being honest with you, right at the start, I'm going to admit straight up that I'm not wholly familiar with this game. You know, I've actually only played it about 40 minutes myself, and that's the footage that I've recorded for you here. But it certainly got me intrigued when I saw it had been released, and I'd seen that the developers Runic Games had made it, being a big uh, fan myself of the Torchlight series. I had to uh, give it a go and, and see what it was about, having done a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of uh, research on YouTube and looking at the trailers and whatnot beforehand. So basically, it's a top-down, as you can see, of course, a puzzle adventure game that is quite an interesting one. It's interesting for several reasons. First of all, the way the story unfolds. Quite frankly, at the moment, I'm not totally uh, sure what the story is about, but you seem to be controlling this wayward adventurer and there's no dialogue of any kind, really, apart from some uh, muffled sounds from your companion, which we'll be introduced to shortly. Uh, but for now, you know, you're just kind of wandering around the world and trying to figure out where it is you need to go and what it is you need to do. So there's some strong puzzle elements, for sure, in Hob. There's no question about that. This can definitely uh, be described as a puzzle game. A puzzle adventure game is probably the best way to describe it. But of course it does have its action elements as well. You do get some weapons and abilities that you unlock throughout the course of the game. Uh, but not only do your abilities help you in fighting enemies and foes that you meet on your adventure. But they're also used to actually uh, affect the landscape and the terrain itself. In fact, as you're going to see, even in this first 30 minutes of gameplay here. A lot of what we encounter in terms of obstacles and whatnot, we can't really do anything with. Indeed, there was a strange plant thing just a moment ago that it said press the square button, but nothing actually happened. I'm still not sure what that's going to be about, but I'm assuming as we go further into the game, then some ability we unlock is going to give us access to that plant and whatever it is going to give for us. The first thing that grabbed my attention then when playing this game was the art style and the graphics, which look absolutely stunning. You can see there's clear inspiration taken, the kind of cartoony approach from the Torchlight series, which honestly you'd expect. So a bit of information for those of you that aren't familiar with Runic Games, and I have followed you know, some of their developers and previous games in the past, but a lot of this information is just coming off the top of my head, so apologies if it's not 100% accurate, so don't take it as absolute truth, uh, but this is the way I'm, I'm aware that it works. So basically, going right back to the development of Diablo, you had uh, some you know, developers team up with Blizzard in order to form the Blizzard North Division, and they made the original Diablo game way back in the 90s. And then after that, Blizzard North went on to develop Diablo 2 and its expansion, Lord of Destruction, uh, a game that I'm very uh, happy to have played, one that I still go back to from time to time due to its addictive action RPG gameplay. Of course, we all know that Diablo has spawned and inspired many, many clones since. Uh, even this game here has taken some inspiration from at least the perspective that was available to the player in Diablo. After the release of Diablo 2, uh, Blizzard North pretty much fell apart at that point and the developers, at least some of the developers, set up their own development studio known as Flagship. And Flagship Studios created their first game which was Hellgate London and it was actually a really hyped game, I remember looking forward to it myself because it was coming from the ex-Diablo developers so everyone was expecting, you know, something similar and a fantastic addictive title. Unfortunately, uh, it was pretty much universally panned by critics due to the amount of bugs that were present in its release candidate. And it was a lot different as well to Diablo, which I think disappointed some fans who was expecting, you know, a kind of uh, spiritual continuation of that series. That said, Flagship did also design a game called Mythos, 
which I believe was originally intended to stress test the servers that Hellgate London would have been running off. Uh, but Mythos itself was very close in gameplay to Diablo. It was the same top-down perspective, the same action elements, etc, etc. And even though it was never released as a game, I actually did get to play a development build of it, and I found it a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, it was basically Diablo crossed with MMO style gameplay, and I am very sad that it never ended up seeing a proper release. Uh, that said, eventually we had the developers from Flagship Studios, at least some of them, uh, meeting up and uh, uh, teaming up, I should say, with some more ex-developers of Blizzard North, in particular Max Schaefer and uh, possibly his brother or some relative, anyway, another Schaefer. And anyway, all of these ex-Diablo developers came together as a team and formed Runic Games, uh, giving us Torchlight 1 and 2 and now Hub, which is of course what we're playing. And so now we've just made our way through the introductory experience here and we have the opening sequence which is really just a mix of uh, the credits, the developers over at Rooney Games and the opening cutscene interspersed with it. So Hob itself was announced back in 2015, in August of that year. So it's been, you know, a good two years since the announcement. I'm not sure exactly how I've missed it for so long, especially because I generally enjoy these types of games. Okay, it's not like Torchlight in the sense that it's more of an adventure game than an RPG. But as we've said, it certainly draws inspiration from it. And so that's why I'm a little bit surprised that this is really the first I've known about it. Okay, so this is where we wake up now for the title sequence. And if you're playing on PC, then it should be noted that it is still recommended that you play with a controller. So if you don't have an Xbox controller, then or, or any other kind of controller really, then I wouldn't recommend perhaps purchasing this on Steam. I've not played the Steam version myself, uh, but that's at least what I've been told. And I think it even gives you a warning at the start that you should have a controller to play. It's just bear that in mind. Obviously on PS4 that's not going to be a problem. I'm pretty sure this game uh, was designed with the console in mind. And then the PC version is probably a port of some kind. So the general concept, at least in these opening 30 minutes or so from what I've played, is that you have the open green lush world, but then you have to traverse certain dungeons and that in order to upgrade your abilities or just flat out gain new abilities and weapons and there's other things you can do as well and then once you've completed gaining your new ability or whatever the case may be you leave the dungeon and make your way back into this green open world where you then have new abilities to move things around or knock things through or break walls or whatever the case may be so for example uh, now that we've woken up we actually have the ability to move this rock crate stone thingy-majig here this platform and we get these nice handy little mud paths just to tell us where it is we need to move them to. And so now we get access to another part of the world that we hadn't previously. And you can jump around as well, as that is the default ability. So you can jump quite far, don't be uh, put off by some of the distances between these platforms. On the ground it doesn't seem like you can jump very high, but you can get some good distance going. Uh, on those jumps as you can see and you're going to be encountering other obstacles and devices that you can't use yet so here i try jumping on this one but of course to no avail that's something that's going to become accessible a little bit later on this block however is another block that can be moved so you can certainly already at this stage of the game see so the puzzle elements and how interacting with them is going to advance the story and the game itself and obviously we're still at the start of the game here, so we haven't had to face anything too challenging. Uh, those devices, by the way, are just your checkpoints. You can see by the saving icon at the bottom of the screen when you get close to them. Uh, but later on, some of these puzzles will cause you to stop, pause and think for a moment as to how you are going to actually advance through them. Sometimes it can feel like you've reached a dead end, uh, but obviously with a little bit of thought, there's always a way through. So 
So I was just checking around to see if there's any secrets or anything, but there wasn't, at least not that I could see. Uh, but when we interact with this cloak thing here, then we get what is uh, some kind of object. Maybe the first part of our weapon or something. Uh, either way, we can't do anything with it at the moment. So what we'll do is go ahead and head back to our friend and that will take us into the next area. So this is an interesting place. It's not a dungeon that we're entering. It's kind of like just a single room, uh, but it has multiple things that we can do. I'm not exactly clear what all of them are at the moment. So we've got this kind of box here at the start, this device, and we can actually enter into it. And I'm not sure if this will give us the option later on to change characters or change outfits or costumes or what, but at the moment everything is greyed out or blacked out, so we can't do anything. And as we start collecting money and currency, if we head over here, we can use that to upgrade abilities. At the moment, we haven't got any, so we can't. Uh, but later on, that's obviously going to be coming in handy. And then finally, we have this furnace, or this forge over here. And we can use those pieces we've just collected outside to actually craft our weapon. I'm assuming, anyway, it's our first of many weapons, because... Uh, well, you'll see, once we've done it here, the device resets. Obviously, those red bars at the top are our health. Just in case you was wondering what they are. But now we've got our weapon. I keep calling it a sword. It's not really a sword. It's quite fat, isn't it? You're going to be slicing anything with it. But you can certainly bludgeon something over the head. There's no question about that. Uh, get a trophy as well, which is always nice to see. So on the PS4, you just hit the square button to attack. You can use the circle button as well to roll dodge from enemy attacks. And just the X button to jump. So that's pretty much all there is to do in the... Uh, room at the moment. We're just going to head outside here and to say hello to our friend again. Hello friend, how are you? And now when you've got your weapon, you actually have the ability to break bushes. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> uh, but it's actually quite important because as you can see, they do tend to block the way. And of course, you, you can smash things over the head as we said a moment ago. Although there's nothing of that description around this particular area. So we don't need to worry about staying alive yet. I was just breaking all of these bushes here to make sure that there was nothing, uh, you know, hidden in them. Maybe there was a trophy attached to it. I don't know, break a thousand bushes in the game. Who knows? I haven't actually looked at them myself yet. We can actually climb down these vines uh, and other things as well. There's like stone steps and just rough edges and using our glove we can uh, make our way down and up them and across them depending on the layout of them okay so it looks like there's a weird device here i'm not exactly sure what it does but if we just hit the square button for now on ps4 then you just get a nice view of your surroundings but that's about it once you've had a nice rest or whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing here uh, we just need to climb back up this spine and then we can start jumping across and as you can see, there's going to be quite an interesting amount of platforming to do in this game. So that's fine by me because I love platforming games. Sometimes they don't always work in 3D. Sometimes they do. I've got to be honest, it's not been so bad so far in Hob. Hopefully throughout the game it will stay that way. Ugh, I remember one of the worst platforming 3D experiences was trying to play Sonic 3D uh, back on the Sega Mega Drive. I think it was the Mega Drive could have been some other Sega system that came out after that. It's going back a few years now, but that was horrendous. Very, very frustrating experience. Fortunately, I think developers have learned a lot over the last 20 years or so in how to do 3D platforming. And he says, as we almost fall to our death there, uh, yeah, we just need to jump across here and start making our way up. You can actually jump across this gap as well, look. In fact, I think you have to. 
Otherwise, you'll be stuck there and the game will never progress. Despite the fact that the game doesn't really have uh, a tutorial at all, this kind of introductory sequence does introduce things step by step. So we've learned how to do a bit of platforming, now we're learning how to fight enemies. And if you die or whatever, then you'll just go back to the previous checkpoint. So that said, uh, our first encounter with these enemies is an interesting one. Uh, we're down to two red health bars already, we only actually start with three, which isn't that many really. Uh, and this guy here is quite tough, so you do need to make use of your roll dodge ability. And my initial idea, and you don't need to bother wasting your time doing this, was that we could use this big heavy guy that was trying to break through that wall up there to break through this wall. It doesn't work. We get an ability later that'll allow us to do that ourselves. Uh, so for now we just need to worry about taking him out. As you can tell by its size, it does hit like a freight truck. So you do not want to be caught under that giant axe when it comes pummeling down to the ground. And you do want to use your roll dodge. Fortunately it attacks fairly slowly. Although it does have a 360 degree attack as well, so don't think hiding behind it is going to necessarily keep you safe. And we get our first bit of money, or currency, or whatever it's called in this game that we need to purchase things with later on. So if you thought that was fun, then there'll be plenty of enemies to plough through later on, don't you worry. Uh, for now we're going to enter the next dungeon area, and we just need to kind of push these parts of the door to the side. And I'm just going to check that there's nothing else hiding away out here. Although there's really no need to because we will be back in this section later on once we've completed this dungeon. But, as we suggested earlier, since this is a dungeon, we will be coming out stronger than how we go in. It seems that these places are where we learn our new abilities, at least initially at the start of the game. So, what this thing is I'm honestly not sure. But no doubt we'll find out in due course. Let's head inside. Just as a side bit of information as well, uh, Hob here was developed in the Ogre game engine, which is a third party engine, it's not in-house, uh, but it is the same game engine that Torchlight and Torchlight 2 were developed for. Uh, by the way, if you play Roblox, uh, I know many of you probably do, since it's a hugely popular uh, simulation game, then that too was developed in uh, the Ogre engine as well, which is interesting. Uh, because it looks so very different, doesn't it, to this particular game. Okay, so we're just making our way through this dungeon at this point, and there is some tricky little platforming sections here with some narrow uh, blocks and platforms that we have to manoeuvre across, so it's very possible you could end up falling and having to reload from the checkpoint, but at least up until this point the checkpoints have been quite uh, regular, so it's not exactly a long backtrack, should the worst come to the worst. Uh, falling down here as you can see, is uh, a bit of a drop after the ladder, so once we come down, there's no way up until we actually have the ability to make our way back to the start, which we don't at the moment. So we'll just continue on around here. It's fairly linear as well, this section. I'm guessing that's generally the nature of dungeons, uh, but we'll see how they progress as we go on further with the game. And here we have a strange contraption, which is going to upgrade our glove for us. And now we have the ability to smash things. And we get another trophy as well for that. I do want to look at the trophies, I haven't seen them yet. It'd be interesting to know if it's a platinum for this game. So on the PS4 you can hit the triangle button for a punch with your glove. Or you can hold it down to charge a punch. And obviously that's going to give you more power when you use it. So there's nothing hiding around here, which means we can head through into the next area at this point. And let's see what we can go ahead and start smashing. So there's a device here, or a button of some kind on the floor, 
uh, which I couldn't seem to do anything with, but I later found out uh, when the game instructs us that if you hit, hit X then triangle, you can do a slam uh, punch. So I'm not sure if that would have done anything, but we'd already gone past uh, this point by the time I figured that out. But if you're playing this, then just give that a try. It might work, might do something, it probably won't, I don't know. Uh, but if I do come back to this bit again in the future, I'll be giving that a try myself. Anyway, we're just going to be smashing our way through walls here. And working our way towards the start of this dungeon once more. But we can't jump up the way we came. Since we don't have the high ground, as Obi-Wan would say. Instead, we need to make our way around here. And this is where we get that... A little notice telling us we can do the slam punch dunk or whatever you want to call it. So I probably could have gone back and tested that other button, but uh, I couldn't be bothered, quite frankly. So you do need to use these ladders. Uh, I did experiment at some point, I don't think it's on video though, that you will die. If you fall from great heights, as you should, I guess. Uh, but obviously in some games you don't, so it was something I did want to try for science, and that's the answer. It is quite a high distance you have to fall from to get injured, uh, but it is possible to do so, so just bear that in mind. And the path is linear here, so we'll just follow it along. We are getting back to the start here, as you can see. But a few more buttons to knock. And walls to break probably in order to continue on the path through. And I do like the animations and I know I've said I like the graphics as well. But it's just very, very pretty, isn't it? And here we are back at the start. So the checkpoints will kick off again for us. And we're going to pop back outside. And now we're going to be back in the open world, but with the punching ability that we didn't have previously, which should hopefully unlock a whole bunch of extra uh, areas for us to go to. So as soon as we come outside, we're greeted by a very brief cutscene here. Our friend just shows us the area beyond, no doubt where we've got to get to. And as a matter of fact, we unlock a new feature here, it's the world map. And the map does have the objective placed for us on it. Uh, although we do have to obviously find our own path towards it and how to reach it. It's not as straightforward as uh, just fast travelling there or anything like that, of course. And it can be a little bit confusing, but this is a puzzle game, so that's the whole idea. I'm not totally sure what all those other icons are that were present there that you saw. I'm guessing as we continue on through the game we'll find out what they are though. Uh, but for now they are to remain a mystery. And that cutscene once again played out, you'll notice without any dialogue. Apart from those gruffled noises with no subtitles or anything from our friend. So the story does just unfold, uh, unfold rather on its own and we just have to kind of assume what's going on. Uh, as we just make our way through the various environments and whatnot. But that's an interesting way of telling the story. Other games have done it before in the past and it's worked out well. So, again, I'm not sure what this device is here. I thought we might be able to slam dunk into it with our glove, but we can't. We can't even jump on it in order to get the right position to do that. And this is where I did experiment with falling. Since there were some enemies down there, I thought we might be able to drop down and fight them but alas we can't you do die if you fall down here there's also a ladder over there or you know part of a rough wall that you can climb up but i'm not sure how you get to it and there's also a collectible of some kind here so i do think that's optional but i could be wrong on that but anyway uh, it's there if you want to get it so there's not much else we can do now apart from backtrack a little bit but we're going to do so using our new uh, slam fist and that takes us back to the area where we upgraded our ability or our weapon earlier on if you remember that 
So we're just going to look around for some of these walls that we would have passed previously. That we can slam through. I don't think there's one there, no. Couldn't quite see there from that angle. Okay, so there's one by the checkpoints. We can smash through this. And what's this here? Hit the square button. It looks like something to do with health or something. Oh, it's money. Lots and lots of money. And I thought these were enemies, but alas, they're quite friendly. And you can just kind of tickle them a bit with your weapon if you want to, but you can't seem to do any serious harm to them. That pink stuff's nasty, by the way. You want to avoid that. And another wall for us to smash through. So 26 minutes in, and we've learned quite a few of the game mechanics already. I'm assuming, anyway, I don't know what's to come, but, I mean, we are smashing through walls. Killing enemies, jumping over things, climbing up ladders. So I'm sure there's more stuff for us to hunt down and locate and unlock. But it looks like we're getting quite far with the core mechanics anyway. So there's that purple stuff I warned you about. Make sure you just avoid it as you run through. Otherwise you'll be losing your health fairly quickly. And just down here actually we have our next set of enemies that we need to take care of. And these are quite fast so just be a little bit careful. The good news is, is that they do tend to drop the health orbs when they die. So, you know, it's quite uh, action RPG-ish, isn't it? And they do drop some money as well. I'm not sure what that broken health bar is at the top that you sometimes see. Next to the three red health bars that we've got. Maybe that's, you know, we're partly there on the way of unlocking a fourth one or something. I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm not even going to try and speculate on that at the moment. There's also one of those beefy enemies down here that we fought earlier on. So I was just going to see if there's anything secret hidden in here before we moved on, but there wasn't. We couldn't actually get inside. So there is no way but to take on that big guy by the looks of things. Which I was going to do anyway, of course. I never stray away from a fight. Well, at least not in a video game. Real life's another matter. So make sure you make use of your roll dodge ability. And try and dodge his attacks with it. But it looks like he does go down quite quickly. Okay, so we've got these lovely platforms in front of us. Just begging us to jump on them. So I think we should accommodate that and do so. And we're just going to basically follow this around now. And this will bring us into the next area. So there are some other weird devices around here. But alas, these are the ones we can't do anything with at the moment. So we're obviously still going to be unlocking things later. It looks like they're tied to those doors though, doesn't it? Which is interesting. So there's going to be new areas and secret places for us to uncover and discover later on. I like the way that the trees kind of get a hole in them. A transparent section. Uh, when the camera pans over them so that you can still keep full sight of the action. It's pretty interesting. I was just checking on the map here to see if there's any notification or direction of where we're supposed to be going. But we're just unlocking the fog of war. And another bunch of enemies here. So these do actually take quite a few hits. I think you're better off trying to get them one at a time. Even though you can hit multiple ones at once with your weapon, you'll also have multiple ones charging you all at once. And you don't want to lose your three health bubbles immediately, do you? So we'll take care of these. And then we're just going to continue on down this path. Uh, there should be one more. Yes, one more here. So there's actually a secret, uh, one of those currency things there. But I think I actually miss it for some reason. But I just saw it then as I was doing the commentary. I was too busy trying to kill that guy with my power punch. So hopefully we'll be able to come back for that at some point. In fact, I don't think we're locked out, are we? So we should just be able to do so even now. But I'm going to finish things off here for today, guys. So that's the first 30 minutes of the game. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Let me know what you think of this uh, hub game. And if you're going to 
uh, take a delve into it yourself. So let us know in the comments section about that. And if you have enjoyed watching, don't forget to leave a like and be subscribed to the Fuzzfinger Gaming YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by today, folks. Goodbye.